Yeah, we're excited about uh, getting the season started. We just got back from Door County up there for preseason. Had some uh, awesome running in Peninsula State Park in some of the uh, local parks around that uh, around that area. It was it, kids responded real well. We did a lot of good work and in kind of excited to kick things off this week. Uh, you know, classes start Wednesday and, and kids get really excited about you know the first me uh, Badger Classic on Saturday. Um, the women are going to run 5K and the men are going to run the usual 8K. Um, not sure yet what the lineup is going to be, but returning on the women's side, seven of our top eight from last year. So um, looking forward to seeing where we're at. Um, you know, it's one thing training up in Door County and running on those manicured trails. And, and obviously, we got a lot of work done, but uh, racing is completely different. On the guys' side, we'll um, put some guys in there, give them an opportunity and, and see where they're at. And, and hopefully there'll be guys that will contribute later on in the season when it really matters. Uh, Coach, um, last month at the World Athletic Championships, you had two of your current student athletes uh, compete at it. How was it, you know, watching Abdulali Hassan and Adam Spencer represent their country on or their respective countries on such a big stage? Nerve wracking. Totally nerve-wracking. Um, yeah, the experience, uh, you know, from NC2As, after NC2As, and these guys have an opportunity, Adam, to go to Europe and Abdullahi go back home to Canada and run a series of, of races up there, um, you know, week in and week out, just watching them uh, compete, getting after it, trying to qualify for Worlds. Um, qualifying standards obviously are, are just out of this world, um, but at the end of the day, making it uh, onto the world stage was an incredible achievement for both of those athletes. Um, yeah, watching them race and, and, and uh, on that stage is it's completely different than the NC2A stage. Um, now that we're a few weeks removed from it, just you know the stories, listening to these guys talk about their experience, I think it's going to stand to them certainly down the road and as they uh, compete at this very high NC2A level. Um, Abdullahi talks about like his roommate was Marco Rupp, the world champion. Um, you know, how awesome is that to spend a week, uh, actually two weeks in training camp first and then in, uh, in Budapest with the, uh, with the world champion. Um, nothing, good, nothing bad can come out of that experience. Um, in, in Abdullahi talks about you know just spending time with Marco and, and you know him talking about training and and obviously he's a full-time professional but um, great experience and the same with Adam. Um, Adam mentioned that one of his favorite days in, in Budapest was you know he chose up at the track the practice track and there was Morgan McDonald and uh, Mohamed um, you know former Badgers and uh, that was a great experience for him so yeah, uh, hopefully it stands to them. Um, they understand that they uh, they belong on that stage. They earn the spot, and uh, I'm excited to uh, you know see where we go from here. Next year is an Olympic year, and of course, obviously trying to get to the Olympics is is going to be real difficult. Um, but those challenges, I'm very excited about that. Hey Mick. Um it seems like with cross country and track athletes and probably with coaches, the season is r around the clock. How do you emphasize, and I know the training has to keep going, but how do you emphasize to your athletes that maybe there's some time over the summer or so at some point that you dial it back a little bit to be ready for when the yeah. lights really come on? I mean, it, it, obviously, it's a great question, and, and this this summer was, you know, extraordinary, and because the World Championships were so late, um, not only the fact that they were that late, it was just trying to get there, in, and we were fortunate to have opportunities for these kids to go to Europe, uh, or even in Abdullah's case, go to Canada, and give them opportunities to, um, you know, to chase those standards. Um, I'm not big on that, you know, chasing standards. It's, it takes a lot out of you, both physically and mentally. But, um, you know, I, I don't think there's a guy in our locker room that wouldn't, uh, you know, 
wouldn't want that opportunity uh, if it's presented to them. Um, and, and so you just kind of push that aside. I'm, I'm NC2A season is over. This is something that I want to do. Um, they have aspirations of, of going on and hopefully do it in another level uh, when they graduate. Um, so there's a certain amount of energy that you put into an NC2A season, a certain amount of energy that you put into that, uh, you know, chasing those times and going to a world championships. Not everybody gets that opportunity, of course. And, and um, you know, from, from my perspective, it just, it never ended. But, you know, the other option, you know, sitting at home and, and just uh, not coaching over the summer, um, I take this any day. And, and having the opportunity to go to Europe and travel with those guys, it was just incredible. To see them out of, you know, out of their normal environment here in the NC2A and, and going to Europe w was great. They, it, I, each one of them have talked about, um, you know, those experiences. Uh, they, you know, gosh, coach, you know, we never knew how much you put into travel. You know, we would, Adam Spencer talks about, uh, he had a flight from London to Finland. Normally that should take about two and a half hours, but he was 12 hours flying. And, uh, you know, we would never do that. And they, they kind of get to see that life is not all a bed of roses at the other, on the other side, and they get to see what we actually do for them. And I think they've got a new appreciation of, of you know, their time here and the opportunities here. So, yeah, you, you balance it out. But, you know, again, if we're going into Olympic gear next year, Olympic trials, we'll, you know, a certain amount of energy will have to go into that after the NC2A season. And then hopefully we'll have a few guys, in, uh, you know, at the, uh, at the Olympic Games. And, yeah, I'd rather do that than, than the alternative. Mick, what what do you kind of expect competition-wise for this first meet out of your group and then, you know, everybody coming in? And then are there, like, times that you hope that they hit or do you just – how do you take the first meet? Yeah, it's it's cross-country. We don't, we don't look at times, um, and particularly this early um, in the year. Uh, for me, September is about training. Um, it's not about racing, uh, guys, girls – going into meets this early in the season. I've got heavy legs after training for, you know, since July 1st, basically. Um, so, yeah, we won't look at times. It's just like how they compete. I think that's more important. Um, this weekend's meet is a little bit uh, uh, tougher than previous years because it's, uh, we're also billing it as a, it's a preview for the, for the Big Ten Championship. So we got a lot more... Uh, more competitive teams coming in than we would normally see at this time of year, which, you know, good and bad to that. But, uh, yeah, we'll just see how they respond. It's We're not looking at times. It's just basically giving some uh, athletes an opportunity to get out there and compete after training for the last two months and, and see where they're at. Um, you know, they're never happy. Um, they don't like the feeling of the, the heavy legs. and and um, But, you know, we'll get through it and, and uh, probably back off a little bit uh, on Friday um, for those athletes that are competing. But we're not looking for an awful lot. It's, you know, some, some Big Ten teams will come in and, and uh, try to take us down and, and, and get exo more excited than we are about it. But, you know, for some of our kids, this is an opportunity. Um, and and uh, hopefully they'll take advantage of that. With so many home meets on the Zimmer course this year, is that an advantage to your team, or is that a disadvantage because they, you know, don't race on too many other courses? Right. I mean, I think it's all tied into the the, the earlier question. Like, you know, we stay at home. We're not traveling. We're not. We don't have to stay in a hotel. We sleep in our own beds, um, and uh, obviously, we get to do it. Do what we do in front of all our home fans. Uh, the community, um, in, in th that, that's obviously, hopefully, going to stand to our advantage when we, you know, host the Nutty Comb and which has gone crazy this year, and, and also the Big Ten Championships. Um, I would like to think home, you know, home course advantage. Of course, we train out there, and but we're going to do our thing. Uh, the end of October at the Big Ten Championships in front of our fans, which I think is very important. But I think. Uh, a big part of it also is less travel. Less travel means less wear and tear on, on our athletes. Mickey, get the, the
the Big Tens here this year. I believe the NCA is here next year at Zimmer, correct? That's correct. Big uh, Tens this year, NC2As next year. How do you keep Zimmer getting those opportunities? What, what has been done to keep it you know, in, at the forefront of, of cross country around the country? And what, what would you like to see done maybe to make sure that keeps going into the future to, to make sure it stays among the best? Yeah, sure. I, I mean, it's getting more and more competitive out there. There's more and more freestanding uh, cross-country courses. More and more schools are are um, are, are, are building courses. Um, the University of Nike, I mean, the University of Oregon, are about to build their own course. Um, yeah, Oklahoma State, where the NC2A championships were last year and two years previous to that, an outstanding course, difficult course. Um, I, I think people like coming to uh, to Madison. Lots of hotels, great restaurants. Uh, we go to some of these, you know, places around the country, and you can't even get the kids a meal. Uh, you know, you have to go to Panera. There's a plug for Panera uh, to, uh, you know, to get meals, order in meals. It's it's like, yeah, I don't know how the NC2A sometimes picks some of these places, but god awful places that you hotels are difficult to you know book rooms restaurants almost impossible but at least in madison we got a ton of restaurants uh great food options great hotels uh, and we have a great course um the guys out at the uh, i say it all the time uh kudos to the guys at the uh the golf course they do an incredible job in maintaining that uh you know i wouldn't like to be getting out there with my lawnmower and and uh, you know, trying to do that. Well, I guess I don't have a lot more, right? I live in an apartment. I live in an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> On Willie Street. Um, yeah, I, yeah I, if you're out there in the next couple of weeks, you'll see Tom Zimmer has built a new Hall of Fame. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's his baby. He run, ran with it. Um, the university gave him permission. He, He's the, the money bags guy that, that put up the, the, you know, funded this. It's supposed to be spectacular. I haven't seen it yet, but he's uh, all over me to get out there. And I'm sure we'll see it given we go out to the course tomorrow. But it's almost complete. And it's a basically a tribute to, um, you know, the incredible success that our program has had over the years. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, yeah, there's always some more improvements you, you can, uh, I'd like to see some fencing, more fencing out there, that natural wood, um, particularly down around the start and into the finish home straight away. And there's some, you know, we're going to work on that. But every year we do something, uh, you know, add a little bit uh, more to the course. And I think that's important for us to, to do that, to stay competitive. With so many of your top returnees coming back for both men and women, can the Badger men win their sixth straight Big Ten championship? And what about the women, you know, possibly moving up from third place last year, especially what being running on your home course? Yeah, first of all, uh, on the women's side, having seven of the top eight back um, with a very good crew of, you know, top five, six, uh, who really did a great job indoor and outdoors over 3K, 5K, and even outdoors over 10K. Um, excited for that crew. Lexi Wesley, um, Daniel Ori, uh, Sammy Stevie, Shay Rooley, Emma Wacky, and you could go on. They're they're you know they're veterans now, um, and you know th that big challenge. Uh, we got to get over that hump, and, and if the guys can do it, why not? And I believe this could be our year. We're we're uh, you know again we we're, we're top heavy on the on the upperclassmen side. Um, they've been through this. They were second two years ago, third last year. So, you know, let's think big, let's dream big, let's, let's bring it home, at home. Um, on the guy's side, um, yeah, are, are you kidding? I, I want to win another one. Uh, that never gets old. Um, doing it at home, I think 2010, Landon Peacock, individual winner. Um, I think we all know Landon struggling with some health issues right now in, in our prayers go out to Landon, and, and, but he had a fantastic victory at home. You know, beat some of the superstars, um, our own superstars, but also the, the rest of the Big Ten. So, um, you know, thinking about Landon at this time and, and thinking about 2010, winning at home, uh, very important for us. But can we win? Yes.
Are we going to go out there and do everything possible? Yes. Thinking a year out, and you'd mentioned Oregon, they'll be a part of the Big Ten. A, Did I really a mention year from that? I, I think that, that <laughs> may have come up. Um, how does how do you anticipate those four schools? I mean, I think for for cross country and track, Oregon is probably the the one that maybe stands out there. But uh, U, USC, UC, you know, these schools in Washington that come in, how does that change things in Big Ten for for cross country and track? Down oh, great, the road? great question. We're tomorrow. We're down in uh, Wednesday down in uh, meetings all day down at Big Ten office, and the topic of discussion is is the addition of these four schools. Um, powerhouses. Each one of them in their own right are powerhouses in our sport, um, particularly in uh, track and field. Um, obviously, Oregon with the tradition and history in there of distance running. Uh, Washington, great cross-country program. They've been at the uh, NC2A championships every year for the last, gosh, I, I, I don't remember when they didn't make it. Um, UCLA and USC, not so much in, in cross country, but uh, my guess is they'll, they'll start uh, going in that direction. Uh, obviously, uh, both uh, California schools, the, the state of California in high school distance running is, is one of the best in the country, so there's no reason why they, why they won't be, uh, you know, be strong uh, in cross country. But in track and field, all four of those schools are going to make a huge difference. Um, going to change the whole dynamic of, of what we do, whether it's in recruiting, how we compete at the at the Big Ten championships, um, for sure. Um, we were just for uh, fun the other day up, up at uh, camp. We were talking about like last year, this past year in in uh, 23 indoors, the 10th best time. Sorry, the 15th best time in in the mile. Uh, indoors for the men was uh, 406 flat, while our uh, Washington has eight guys under four minutes. You know the the top the, the top ten, the top twenty list, top thirty list in the conference is just going to be blown out of the water. Um, great for the sport, but it's going to present all kinds of challenges for sure.